Hi, I'm Rob Cosm. Welcome to my shop. Block planes are often the very first hand plane that folks get. Knowing how to set it up, sharpen it, and adjust it will make it a lot more pleasurable to use. It doesn't take nearly as much time as you think. Stay with me. I'll walk you through it. I'm Rob Cosman, and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. Okay, so here's what I'm going to use. I've got two samples in front of me. This is the original Stanley, and this is a modern version of that style of plane. Close, not exact, but close enough. I'm actually going to take a brand new one out of the box and go through the process. And I would say that most block planes are close enough and sim are similar enough that what I do to this one is going to apply mostly to any of them. So you'll be able to follow along regardless of which one you have. Now, now just, just before gonna... we tear this open and go to work on it, I want to explain the two different types of block planes. There's what we call standard angle and low angle. The difference is the angle that the blade actually meets the wood. Let me explain. This is a standard angle. This is a low angle. So we're, what we're going to refer to first is this bedding area right here. We can call it the frog surface. This one is a 20 degree. This is the standard angle. So the blade is fixed in the plane at 20 degrees. On the low angle, the blade is fixed in the plane at 12 degrees, 8 degrees lower. However, if you're concerned about the angle of attack or the angle that you're actually planing the wood, because it's a block plane and the bevel is positioned on the top side, you have to factor that in when you're calculating at what angle are you actually planing. Now, a lot of folks think that if you're going to plane end grain, you should hit it at a low angle. I tend to disagree, but I'll explain it regardless. On this one, well, let's still use this one because it's a little bit cleaner. So I would start with 12 degrees. Primary bevels are usually around 25 degrees. So to the 25, you add the 12, you're at 37. Now, most folks are going to employ some form of a micro bevel. And that purpose of that is instead of having to polish all of this and only use right out here, we elevate the blade slightly on the stone. I'll show you this later in the video. And we just do the very leading edge. And typically that can be somewhere around five degrees. So 12 and 20 is 37 and five is 42. So with our low angle block plane, we're actually planing the wood at 42 degrees. The only difference is gonna be on the standard angle, we have to add eight degrees because of the bedding angle. So instead of 42, we're planing at 50 degrees. And just in case you're interested, a traditional bench plane where the blade is on the bottom side, you're planing at 45 degrees. And as I mentioned, with a good sharp plane, you can plane that end grain flawlessly with a bench plane and you have the advantage of having that extra weight behind the blade, which makes it a whole lot smoother, I think. So and when choosing a block plane, my preference is the low angle, not because of the geometry I just explained, but for the ergonomic reason. I'll show you what I mean as I put this together. Just gonna open the throat up a little bit and make sure that seats in there properly. Okay, so the distance in height from the top of the lever cap, this thing right here, to where I'm gonna hold my hand is much lower, which I find it nestles in your palm a lot better. And you're pushing behind the blade more so than up on top of the blade with a standard angle. If you wanna change the angle of attack, you can simply get a different blade and put a higher primary bevel on there and you can literally adjust it to any angle that you want. But in terms of actual use, I think you're gonna find the low angle a lot more comfortable for that particular reason. Okay, I've taken this apart. There's not a whole lot to this. Nothing to do, and in terms of what do I need to do to it? Nothing to do with the lever, lever cap. I'm gonna do some work to the blade. Nothing to do with that toe plate. Nothing to do with that uh, mechanism for opening and closing the, the uh, throat, but that's the front knob. And there's your mechanism for advancing and retracting the blade. None of that needs to be dressed with. However, because it's a block plane, you tend to have your hand all over it like so. So I want these edges to be eased just for a matter of comfort. So what I'll do is take a file and just start by filing a 45 degree bevel or chamfer, I should say, on there. And I always work away from the sole so that if there's any burr, it's not on the side that's actually gonna have contact with the wood. And I'll turn it down a little bit lower and then just keep changing the angle so that 
it's cutting more of a radius. And that's a lot easier on the thumb and fingers than that side is. So do both of these. Measured in seconds, really. Now I'm going to do this end as well. So I'll just roll the file around. Okay, regardless of what stones you're using, I happen to start with a 500 grit and a 16,000. I only need the two. First thing I'm going to do is prepare the back. Instead of doing all of this, we employ what's called the Charlesworth ruler trick. So I'm going to set a steel rule on the edge of the stone, hold it in position so that it's flush with the outside edge, set the blade down. I want to work within a quarter of an inch of that edge. Three fingers distribute the pressure evenly, and I'll just run that forward and back, staying within that quarter inch limit I set for myself. And we're going to cut through any of the grinding scratches left on the back of the blade from the factory. Doesn't take long. Flip it over. And what you want to see is a polished strip that runs all the way. It looks like right there I might not have made it all the way, so I'm going to give that another minute or so. Okay, so that's been about two minutes. So if we clean off the back, what we want to see is no longer any of these scratches going all the way. And even though that's not uniform, it doesn't matter. That's the advantage of the Charlesworth ruler trick. You don't have to go in and flatten the blade. But I've managed to get that clean right over to here. Now you may think going from 500 grit to 16,000 is a big jump, but the surface area is such a small area that we can do it. It doesn't take long. So I'm gonna spend about the same two minutes working within a quarter of an inch of this edge and I'm gonna polish away the scratches left from the previous stone, the 500 grit. And from now on, anytime I sharpen, I'll never touch the back of this blade with anything coarser than my finished stone, in this case, a 16,000 grit. Okay, about two minutes worth of polishing. Flip that over. And we should have a nice, highly polished strip that goes side to side. Ignore the fact that it's lower here than it is over there. Just as long as out there in the edge, it's polished. Now we never have to touch that back again except for three or four seconds after each sharpening and only on the 16,000. Now we'll do the bevel. This is really quick. Primary bevel is 25 degrees. I'm going to set that down on the stone so we can find it. Big advantage of a thick blade is you get a large primary bevel, easy to locate. Keep my hands tied together, find the primary, Raise up just a few degrees, little tight circles. Smaller the circles, more accurate and easier just to do freehand. And I need about 10 seconds of work on this stone. And at the end of 10 seconds, I should be able to detect a burr, a slight burr that runs corner to corner. If I get it, I'm done with this stone. Now I'm gonna come over to my finished stone, the 16,000, and I'm gonna do the same thing except I'm going to raise up just a degree or two higher. So there's my primary. I'm up just a little bit higher than I was on the previous stone. I'm going to do the same 10 seconds of work. Tight circle. Lock your wrist, lock your elbow, work from your shoulder. After 10 seconds, as a final step, put your steel rule back on, flip the blade over, stay within a quarter of an inch of the edge, Spend one, two, three seconds removing any burr. Now we'll dry this off. I'll show you how to put it back in the plane carefully, and then we'll test it out. Okay, first thing we want to do is open up the throat, pull that way back so it don't, doesn't get in our way. Now you've got a choice of slots, so you're going to make it so that somewhere in your middle of your adjustment uh, movement, you're going to have that blade pretty close to projecting through the sole. I'm going to turn this over, remember bevels on the top side, carefully set that in place and just feel for when it engages those slots. Now the lever cap, it usually comes, if you're taking it right out of the box, this is probably going to be tighter than you want simply because they have it that way so that it doesn't get uh, knocked loose in shipping. Now I want that tight enough so that it won't allow it to come apart 
and it won't accidentally pop off on me when I'm using it. And what I like about this is I can pop that off, but not allow all the pressure to come off, just enough to hold it in place. And then I can go in there and quite easily move it side to side to get exactly where I want it in terms of being parallel to the sole or to make it easier to adjust this way. So I'm gonna just guess on this, flip it over. Now, if you put a light colored background behind you, you can see when the blade is projecting. And I can see that I've got more blade on the right side than on the left. So I'm gonna come in here, take the pressure off, but keep enough to hold it in place. Just a slight movement. And I'm gonna retract it a little bit. Put that in place. Now I wanna bring that toe plate a little bit closer. Only when I'm trying dealing with figured wood am I gonna have it really tight. Normally I'll have it somewhere right about there. It really doesn't perform any function if it's not almost just the thickness of the shaving. And see if it's cutting parallel to the sole. So I'm gonna go from one side to the other and it seems to be pretty even. So I'll back it off just a little bit more. Now let's switch these out and put in the piece of maple with the end grain up. First thing we want to do is cut a little chamfer on the back side so that those fibers don't break off. A little wax just makes it so much easier. That's a bit heavy for, for maple. Okay, I'm, I'm, I've got a piece of pine in here. I want to check and make sure that my blade is parallel to my sole. So I'm going to, first of all, I want to see my... Okay, so that's fairly light pass. Now I'm going to go all the way to the left side. That's about what I get. And then I'll go all the way to the right side. It's a little bit less, so it's not a big adjustment. So what I'm going to do is pop off the lever cap, but keep a certain amount of pressure, and then just ever so slightly shift that blade. So that's what I'm getting on that side. And that's about the same on that side. So let's test it out first on a piece of maple. Don't be shy about the wax, it cuts down the friction. So it easily peels off a nice shaving on. on the, maple. Now we'll close the throat down. And when I say that, I'm going to close it down so that it's just a little peak of light. It's a little too much right there. Just lock it tight. And by the way, the way you hold this, there's an indent right there for your thumb. There's two indents on either side for your index finger and thumb and your opposite hand. You've got that lever cap nestled up into your palm. I typically have my fingers wrapped around the bottom. Not uh, rarely do I ever use this plane on a flat sur on a wide surface, so it's almost always on something that's narrower than the width of the blade. I use my finger on the underside as a bit of a guide. Thumbs pressing down first so that the plane starts on the same plane as the piece of wood, and then bring that out just a little bit more. Here's your block plane. I consider it to be one of my top four essential planes. I like this one. I like the width of it. I like the weight of it. I like the adjustment. Choose whichever one you want, but go through the process of setting it up and sharpening the blade, and you'll be surprised at how effective it is in your shop. Completely eliminates sandpaper in a lot of reasons, a lot of situations. Good luck. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the plane and chisel icon below, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our in-person and online workshops.